Hey you guys, how you doing? We made it to yet another Wednesday. It's so good to see you. Part four of Painting Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary. So this is pretty cool. And let's see who we got. Rick, good to see you. And Joe, how's it going? We got Roy. We got my compressor. We have Willie, how's it going? What's going on, Roy? We have Mike, good to see you, and John. Thank you very much, guys, for showing. Really appreciate that. So we have nine people in the room. Go ahead, guys, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. That would be cool. So here we are in the middle, uh, middle of a blizzard here in the New York City metropolitan area. Good to see you, Rick. So glad you can make it, my friend. And John and everybody. Chris, how are you doing, Mr. Garcia? Good to see you, my friend. Chris is in the house, so uh, that is great. And so, Chris, did you do you have to work tomorrow in the snow, or do you get the, the day off, I hope? So, let's see. So now what I'm going to do... Today we're going to go ahead, well first we're going to move Tim out of the way. Oh, look at that, the chat viewer is not working. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll get authorization to use that chat viewer here. Let's see, so this way you guys will show up. Let's see if that happens. Okay, and that should happen, but we'll see. So for some reason, the chat viewer is not working. I'll work on that as we go uh, in the course of the evening, guys. Oh, it's your day off in Friday. Thank goodness. Hill Billy Abel, how are you, sir? Good to see you. Two by two, thumbs of blue. <laughs> That's cool. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so, so now that we have Mr. Wonderful, let's see if I can get a picture of of that gentleman here. Um, let's see, here he is. So this way you can see what I'm doing. Let's not make him too big, right? Let's not get carried away here. Uh, we'll just, since we don't have the chat viewer, we'll just put him right there. And there we go, okay. So, Okay, so we're going to put Mr. Wonderful aside. I did finally crop him off so you can see pretty much where I'm going. Otherwise, I had too much empty space. So that happens from time to time. So what we're going to do is going to put him aside. Excuse me, sir. And then I'm going to take out my tape. So I already did the football, which is good. So remember, when you, when you do your cutout, you always want to have the tape face down. So that's very important. Oh, Willie, so you like the airbrush. Oh, fantastic, I'm glad it arrived. I know a lot of people's airbrushes were, were delayed. And Chris on, Chris, on your airbrush, I'm just waiting for the parts to make your Extreme Patriot 105. So that's gonna be there shortly. So Joe, did you receive yours yet? I know there was a delay with, and same thing with Roy, there were delays with, uh, with USPS. Hey Todd, how's it going? Good to see ya. Tone, how are you? Okay, so we're just uh, putting in the tape here. And yeah, it, mine isn't either. So I think I'm gonna try it again. I'm gonna try and authorize it. But there seems to be an authorization issue with it. And, oh, there we go, look at that. Third time's a charm, so that's cool, okay. So sometimes persistence gets the job done, right? And let me go ahead and uh, pull Mr. Wonderful forward there, watch this. There he is, there's Mr. Wonderful. And waiting on the Pony Express, I'm so sorry about that. And, as you know, I shipped it like a while ago and you still don't have it, you know? And let's see, we're gonna come over here like that. Now the thing is with this thing, when you're doing these uh, cutouts, you definitely wanna make sure that 
there aren't any holes because if there are it's going to come back to bite you and that would not be good you know so so cool everybody's here thank you so much and if you guys get a chance hit that share button uh, if you can share it if not don't worry about it but the more we share the more uh, new people come in and the bigger the channel gets and you know all that good stuff so let's see so right here so let's go ahead before I do that let's go ahead and put this part on because what I'm gonna do is I'm going to paint I'm gonna go ahead and paint his jacket not exactly the most exciting part but it's good for you guys to see how I handle it I can handle it let's see just like that there we go so I have the jacket nice and covered uh, jacket is exposed and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna Joe says he's a kid waiting for the Dakota ring in the mail because <laughs> that's, that's so funny yeah you know uh, Willie exactly I sent yours later than everyone else and you got yours faster so it is like you know I guess during Christmas time you know this time of the year you know and I do apologize I wish I could drive and give you if I could drive there and give you your airbrush I would do that my friend but you're gonna love it when it gets there so uh, that's all I could say <laughs> you know but I but I wish uh, I would have sent to UPS if I knew that uh, USPS was going to be so bad right guys okay so now I'm almost done and so I just got to do these two and then we'll go ahead and start putting in that dark no, I, actually, I was remember a long time ago. I used to use. I mean, we're talking a long time ago. The Sotar Slim, the 2020 Slim, until I discovered the Extreme Patriot Arrow, you know. And when that happened, then I started customizing it, and I never looked back, you know. But yeah, those were the days. I mean, I do play with the Slim every now and then. But, you know, for the serious stuff where it has to be, you know, it has to be, you know, my best possible work, I always use the Extreme Patriot Arrow. Let's see how this goes. Okay, great. So now that looks good. Let's make, let's hope I did it the right way. Okay, I think I did. And what we want to do is just protect, we want to protect that shirt, you know, that white shirt. We don't want to muddy it up. Definitely don't want to muddy it up. Monty, how you doing? Ah, oh, thank John, how's it going? That's right, that's right. No coquito until you get yours. That's true. That's a deal, Chris. And uh, Willie says, yes, we do have to talk to Badger about, you know, getting my own signature airbrush, you know, on the Badger site. Right, guys? That's for sure. But till then, you can purchase that from me, which is really great. Uh, I, do the custom, I do the custom Extreme Patriot Arrow and the Extreme Patriot 105. It's very exciting stuff. Okay, so now, as you can see, we're set up to go ahead and darken that shirt. Let me just peek. Okay, so see, it's a good thing I did a peek because I wasn't quite where I wanted to be. There we go. And let's see. What's up, Brad? Good to see you. I had my head down. How are you, sir? How's everything, Brad? Always a pleasure. So we're just gonna come down here. We go, when you do this, it looks like he has a bib. Uh, you wanna go away from the paper, okay? That's always a good rule of thumb. 
We don't want to oversaturate because we do. We'll get much too dark. Hey, Raul, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. Oh, look at that. Chris says, FBS gold tape. I hear a lot of good things about that, Chris. You and Brad uh, really love that stuff. So that is so cool. One of these days, we'll just keep that down. But definitely, if you, if you want an airbrush that pretty much gives you the exact detail that a micron can for around $150. Definitely ask me how. I'll be glad to share that with you. But that was a light mixture and I'm going to let that dry. And See, I'm starting to look. Oh, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, Wendy, how you doing? Oh, no, Wendy's not here. Oh, Wendy, I last I talked to her, she was feeling better but she didn't have her sense of taste and smell. Um, so that's, you know. Oh, cool, that would be great, Chris, definitely, the Coquito. That's right. That's, uh, that is what you call Puerto Rican eggnog, right? That stuff is amazing. So here I am with the medium mixture, and this is my signature airbrush, which is the my custom extreme patriot 105 and then i have my custom extreme patriot arrow so look how both of them are different and they have uh, different insides and some souped up things going on which is really cool it's just next level stuff you know just So Brad said he had a lady RCMP at the house here yesterday. She was a lot better looking. Look at that. Hey, Mr. Leahy, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. And notice I'm spraying away from the paper. Now, why do we spray away from the paper? Because if we spray towards the paper, it's gonna get underneath, and that's not gonna look good, so. So this whole thing, what we're doing is basically to keep the integrity of the white shirt. That's what it's all about. It's all about that white shirt. And I'm not going to go too crazy, but I just want to darken this up a little bit. screen here and see how our stream is doing today okay so we had 19 people here not bad not bad a good start can we hit 40 today that's the question if any of you guys have a chance to hit the save button out there that would be great I want to see 40 40 concurrent viewers I know we can do it I know we got the technology well, we have a lot of technology. We just need people, right? But we have the best people. So the best people will bring more people. That's how I feel. So you see, we have that really nice edge there. So that makes me happy. And then we'll pull this off. And you see now, Mr. Wonderful has a suit, at least. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to use a freehand shield. And I want to thank John Payne for sending these uh, little freehand shields he made for me. And that is really exciting. I'd like to thank you for that very much. Oh, the difference between the two, the nozzle sizes are the same on both of them. Uh, I modified the needle in uh, different ways. <coughs> and so it's the same nozzle but I modified the needle, changed the needle, modified it so it sticks out a little bit further. So it gives you that extra detail, Joe. Great question. So now I'm going to bring up uh, 
Mr. Wonderful here. I'm gonna put some more light mixture uh, in there. Because I was painting a little bit early, actually a lot today. I was finishing up a commission and working on a second speed painting. So doing my normal six hours of airbrushing a day. Wendy, how you doing? How are you feeling? So cool that Wendy's here. I hope you got your sense of smell back and taste. I'm gonna do this part by hand. So we're all holding our breath to see how you're feeling, Wendy. Wendy's just keeping this suspense. She's not gonna tell us right away. Oh my goodness. Oh man. So you have to go to the doctor for that. Oh my goodness. Wow. Well, I hope you feel much better, Wendy, and I hope they can give you medicine that will just take care of that, right? That's what I'm praying for. And it's So tomorrow you go into the doctor and they're just gonna prescribe medicine and they, oh, antibiotics. Oh, the antibiotics didn't work. Oh my goodness. here with the light mixture over here yes Wendy we definitely want you to feel better and do whatever the doctor tells you to do for you very hard, Wendy. I really hope you feel much, much better. We're just uh, bringing in that shirt, I mean the jacket, and then we could work on the shirt. And once we come in with that white of the shirt, it's really going to bring things together. Hey Rick, how you doing? Yes, Wendy. You have to get better, so there's no choice. Chinese market, that's correct, John, definitely. 
new air pressure coming, new air compressor coming tomorrow. That's great, John. That's fantastic news. John, did you get the uh, erasers I sent? I hope so. I sent them a while, but with the United States Postal Service, we never know. Uh, I think I sent them last week, John. Did you receive them? Holding my breath that you did. Oh, great. Perfect. Okay, John. Thanks. I appreciate that. And thanks for, you know, sending that little package out. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rick. No. Um, I'm always, see, Badger's a real great friend of our site, Rick. And so, basically, I am a big fan of, of uh, Badger, and Badger uh, is supportive of, of this channel, and so, uh, so basically I have the blessings of, of Ken to go ahead and sell my own custom airbrush, so, uh, so I'll refer you guys still to great airbrushes on United States, USAairbrushsupply.com. But now I'm actually selling my custom airbrush, my signature airbrush, I'm selling on my website. So that's a difference. But still, you know, still a great, uh, our channel and Badger are great friends. And uh, so we really have a great, a great relationship of creativity. And I'll tell you, out of all the airbrush companies in the world, there's nobody I'd rather be associated with than Badger. Just they really care. Uh, hey, Patrick, all the way from... Patrick, all the way from Montreal. Good to see you, my friend. So cool. Very cool you're here. So what we're doing now is we want to make sure that we don't get any areas... So I don't know if you've seen part one, but whenever I, and also my speed paintings, and I always start off with the Vega 1000 for the white, and there's no other airbrush out there for that. So that is a very inexpensive, uh... <laughs> Roy says he can get a turtle to move faster than the postal service. Lately, uh, you are right, my friend. I wish that was not the case, uh, but, you know, I guess with COVID-19 and all that, it's just getting worse and worse, you know? And now the holidays, I guess it's a perfect storm. Speaking of perfect storms, we have, we're getting about 12 inches today in the New York City area, which is very scary. Oh, Rick, definitely, I want you to email me. So if you ever get it, so if you're interested, Rick, email me uh, at you know, paintedglyphs at gmail.com. I'll put it in. This is my email address, paintedglyphs at gmail.com. There you go, sir. Did I put it in there? Did it go through? That's the question. Let's see. Paintedglyphs at gmail.com. There we go. Okay, so there you go, sir. So if you want more information on that airbrush, just give me a shout, you know. Just email me, and I'll be glad to give you the, the lowdown on it, you know. Wow. Oh, yeah, well, you're upstate a little bit there, Chris. That's for sure. So you know, you, you're in a whole different ball game, my friend. So please be careful. Don't go, don't shovel too much if you're going to shovel. Make sure you take breaks, my friend. Oh, great. Yeah, so uh, definitely you'll love this airbrush if you're a Badger fan, that's for sure. Oh, cool. Thank you so much, Patrick. I appreciate that.
So as you see, we're just kind of sculpting this area. Now this area is dark, right? And I'm back to light mixture, which I should come over with the medium mixture. And we're gonna set this up for the dark mixture later. You guys know the deal. Can't go, you gotta basically stay light for as long as you can and then eventually go darker. So we're taking our time with the medium mixture. Although we, you could go ahead and just nail this with the dark mixture, but I'd rather set it up and work on those values together. Bring those darks uh, to fruition at the end, right? If I did it too early, it'll throw everything off, right? So. Okay, so while I'm doing this, I'm looking at areas that I can improve. So I have the medium mixture here. And what I'm gonna do is make sure I bring this dark up here. And I'm looking for some interesting shapes within the shapes here and trying to make sure that I see things as three-dimensional surface, you know, as a three-dimensional surface. <laughs> John says, live dangerously. Oh, so Rick, you tried to modify the Patriot. Yeah, you know, it, it's hard sometimes to get the right parts and everything and I think you know over the past two years of using these airbrushes that I was able to find a sweet spot to modify these to really bring bring it up to the next level I mean it's great the the design of the extreme Patriot arrow is right on but with my little tweaks here and there I really feel that I just took it to even a higher level for me, and that's what's great, you know. Oh wow, everyone sold out, wow. Now we're gonna go back to the uh, light mixture again. So, you know, you can see once you start introducing the media mixture, you wanna go with the two airbrush system. Now, you might ask Tim, why the two airbrush system? So, good question. So, what, it, what the two airbrush system is, is that it allows me to go back and forth. So, let's say I see an area where it's lighter. So, with the two airbrush system, <coughs> I'm not trying to do it with the medium mixture. So, I can go back to the, the white, the light mixture and that just makes more sense. So, you know, it's easy to get complacent and say, oh, I can try and get that with the, with the medium, with the medium mixture, but in reality, it's a job for the light mixture. So having a two airbrush system keeps you from making that error. So that's something you really want to uh, keep in mind. If you don't have the two manifold, the, the multiple manifold on your on your compressor, let me know. I'll email you and send you a link. That's very important. Very, very important. Well, you know what it is, Todd? Good question. I do want you to spend smart money, right? That's the thing. So if I can get you to spend, let's say, $150 as opposed to $500 with the Micron, then you guys can have more money to buy, you know, other great things, you know, uh, you know, so you're not spending too much, right, uh, Todd? So, so my thing is, yes, I want you guys to spend money, but I don't want you to spend too much money, right? So that's true, Todd. And uh, John says, still waiting to see Tim paint the both brushes at the same time. <laughs> yeah, where is Mr. Leahy? I know he was here. So I'm back with the light mixture and I'm just going to
put in some little details that I'm starting to see now. And remember, we're not looking for a likeness. Don't get involved in the likeness. That's a trap. You're painting the light, not a likeness. Okay, guys? So don't get into that trap, whatever you do. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to figure out, like, how are we going to do the white of his shirt? And I think what we're going to do, we're going to reserve that. We're not going to do it just yet. But I think that's a job for white pastel. That's what I think. I really think that's a job for that. And I'm going to look at the uh, necktie area here. And I don't want it to get too dark too early over here. So I'm just going to calm that down. And what that does, if you get too dark too early, it draws all the values off. So you want to keep everything in line and darken everything up. <laughs> so Todd said, well, that's very interesting. You will have extra money for that, Todd, definitely. Or maybe go to Hooters, right? You know? I'm just going to go ahead and do some little details here in the eyelash you know I like to do random stuff like just move around and it's not really random it's just sort of looking around and seeing you know where you can create balance so this eraser the single X by Everhard Faber if you guys have you tried it so who has tried this uh, eraser and what do you guys think so far you know as, as when it comes to this technique here I actually love this eraser. I mean, this is the best thing since sliced bread, you know? Now what I have to do is make sure I'm not getting too hard edges and not trying to put in shapes that aren't necessarily there, right? So that's what I'm really combating. Uh, <laughs> oh, John, oh, cool. John says he loves the eraser. Uh, John uh, Diekman and John Payne. Very cool. Yes, this is a great eraser. And it just makes our lives easier. Anything that makes our lives easier is key, right? That's what it is. Anything that makes our lives easier. And so what we're going to do, we're going to go back to uh, making some more of of these voided shapes. We're gonna go into white mixture. We're gonna be looking around again. Uh, so Tone says he got some reading to do and check you out later. Hey Tone, thanks for hanging out my friend. You take care. And so I'm just going to pump the trigger here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some of these darker values. Now, darker values means that not necessarily dark values, but they're darker than what's around them. And they're also, you know, describing the form. So let's make sure we get that turning of the form, guys and girls. That's really important. Same thing here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna turn some of these forms here. And then we see that it kind of lightens up over here. And let's make sure we, we help that lighten up over here. And right there, we sort of, so we're really gonna concentrate with that one second rule. And we're going to make sure we don't get complacent. And I get complacent, and that's something I fight. You know, the one second rule really keeps me in the, in the game. And that's what I want to do. Keep me in the game. So now what I really, I'm really trying to find where the light is, right? And pull that out and really not worry whether or not it looks like Mr. Wonderful. I'm just going to make it look like the three-dimensional forms that are being affected by that singular light source. So right here you have this light coming down 
where it's hitting the nose, and that's going to describe the form, also describe the light, and also the intersecting forms, which is the cheek coming into the nose over here, into the side of the nose. See, that's all connected. And so that's what we're really looking to do at this point, is try and find those shapes. Now, why am I using this eraser as opposed to that really nice aggressive eraser we were talking about earlier? Well, we're not using that aggressive eraser because we want to go uh, aggressive. Uh, we want to go with the least aggressive first, and whatever is effective is fine, but if it's not effective, then you just keep getting more aggressive until you're getting the uh, erasing that you need, you know, so that's so important. You don't want to kill the surface too early. You know, you want to give it time. So always remember, you want to give it time and you definitely do not want to tear the surface right off the bat. And see how I made a hard edge over there. So when I'm looking and I see something like that's really hard edge, I know I have to calm it down. So right there, I'm going to calm that down. And then I see that there's this light that comes down. Remember, whatever is facing the light is going to get more, is going to get more uh, white. So what's facing the light gets more white. Remember that? And that will keep you from, you know, getting lost. And you don't want to get lost. Just make it look wonderful. <laughs> very true. Very Make it look like Mr. Wonderful. And you see here, there is something that I don't like in this area, and I'm going to address that, but not yet, because it's really not, a, not about the likeness at all. It's definitely about all these different forms that are on his face, interject, intersecting, being adjacent to one another, all of that. And so right here we have this sort of uh, wrinkle here, for lack of a better, better word, or crease. And we're just gonna put that in just like that. Now that looks harsh, yes it does, Tim, but that's all right because we're coming back. Let's go and make this happen. And we're just gonna darken that and then slowly fade that in. And then we're going to work on that crease once more. Now look look what these airbrushes can do. How I can get like the tiniest of creases. Which is, to me, is really great. And then we got a little wrinkle right there. Right there. Now normally I wouldn't get involved in such tight details so early, but it's pretty important as far as the three-dimensional qualities of, of his head and his features. There we go. And you can see that it might be a little Wrong, so I can just dust that back and and even just calm it down a little bit with the eraser there's no you know a lot of different things you can do and so now you can see how it just sort of is kind of strong there so we have to sort of make that come into the tapestry of the form here or like I like to say the uh, the grain of the skin. And I'm also looking to see, you know, where, where are things looking a little too strong? You know, not that they're not going to be darker later down the line 
But what I like to do is to make sure that nothing is standing out just yet. Okay, there's plenty of time to, you know, accentuate things here and there. But right now, it's all about, it's all about the tapestry. You know, getting that, getting that situated, you know. And let's see. Patty, how are you? Good to see you. So cool. So glad you're here, sir. I mean, sir. So glad you're here, Patty. I called you sir. <laughs> Oh boy. So how you doing, Patty? So glad, how is work? I know you're working so hard. I hope you're not working too hard. I always say that, don't work too hard. And thanks for checking out my speed painting earlier. I appreciate that. So you see how I'm moving about, guys, how important that is? And I'm just going to continue that. And so you see there's a lot of different three-dimensional forms that are happening here. And we're going to even uh, make them turn even more when we come in with the white pastel. But I just want to establish some of, some of those value changes here and there. And then right here, very interesting, it gets much darker, like sort of the center of his forehead, right here. And I'm just going to look at the value, right? And look at the values around it. And those are going to be very important telltale signs as to what's happening, you know? It's so cool we have such a caring group and everyone is just giving so much wonderful support to Wendy. And uh, I just, I'm just so lucky to have such great people in the live streams every Wednesday. So you guys are really great. And you always cheer me up. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of prayers and wishes for Wendy. Wendy's gonna get well very soon. So you see right here, uh, oh, Wendy's counting down, I mean, uh, uh, Patty's counting down Friday. Oh, thank you. Uh, Patty says, Mr. Wonderful's looking good. I appreciate it. So you see how, even though it's the forehead, you know, you don't want to uh, ignore the forehead, right? You want to see what's going on anatomically. And when you see what's going on anatomically, you can, now you can tell that it's just not this, you know, plate. It's, there's a lot of things going on. There's, as you can see, there's underlying anatomical structures underneath that forehead. And you really have to address it and address it early. So I hope that helps you when you're painting something like, you know, a beautiful portrait and, you know, and you might be ignoring the forehead or this area but I want you to look for the details that are in there. But when you're looking for the details, I want you to make sure that you don't go too dark and think of the whole tapestry, right? You gotta, we have to make sure that we're not drawing anything out of whack. Everything has to be in balance throughout the whole painting. Yes, we all do love Wendy very much, uh, Willie, that's true. Uh, uh, Mr. Kennedy, how are you today? The vaccine will be here in Tennessee within hours. That's very good news, definitely. And oh, your wife's on the list. That's great. And it can make you sick. Yeah, that's true. That's definitely true. So now what I'm just going to be working on that tapestry a little bit more. So now we can see that there is a definite uh, anatomical structure going on in the forehead. Now remember, use the least aggressive eraser first because you're working on paper. So you want to have an economic view on 
when you're erasing because each time you erase you're tearing into that surface so make sure that see I can get away with it now with the kneaded eraser because everything's so light so always remember that so maybe I'm gonna go a little bit more aggressive now I'm talking a little bit with this mono knock 3.1 right so just a little bit That's a little strong, but we're going to go ahead and calm that down momentarily. Alright, so... Oh, I'm glad she's taking it, definitely. Oh, Patty says, can I burnish it back down? Now, you mean like burnish the, uh, oh, you mean the, uh, when it's too light? Well, what, good, great question, Patty. What I like to do is just dust over it, you know, probably about four inches from the surface with the light mixture. And that just calms it down a little bit. And that helps. And then when we come in with the uh, white mixture, or the light mixture down the line, uh, I'm sorry, with the white pastel, and then things will really start to ramp up. So right now we're just kind of at establishing those shapes, uh, Patty. But the main thing, and that's the main thing I always want uh, to be taken away, is that we always want to make sure we're going slow with the values. We're not going too dark too early, you know? Wow, Wendy, I understand about the vaccine. So you see, I'm really looking at the big picture and stepping back and looking at uh, the portrait of his head as a whole. So now with that thinking, I can see it's much darker in his hair, right? So in his hair, I would say the value in his hair is close to this. So now at this stage, you can actually pick up where that, where a value is. So you don't have to guess, you can actually look elsewhere where you already established a value similar, and that helps a lot. So let's go ahead and do that. One second rule always, and I force myself to do that, guys, definitely. So I'm going to just darken this a little more, guys. Put some shape in that contour where his hair is. Just pull that out a little bit. So you can see I have to go much darker with the hair. And we want to make sure we get that and has it get that hair extended that hairline right here extended there we go see how I'm pulling that down it's very important you know his hairline is very important because it does it does bring darker values so we definitely want to see those darker values and when it come in with those lighter values I think are going to help a lot too but that's later because we have to come with the white pastel to get the lighter values. We may erase some here and there, but as you can see, these little details as we're doing them are going a long way describing form and then his likeness starts to appear. But it's going to appear on its own accord. Really is a nice dark right in there, so let's take a look. So if I'm looking at the 
uh, deep is dark. This is almost like a dark room. See, this is a shadow, but see how this is even darker? Think of a dark room, right? And you know, your eyes are adjusting, but then think of a, a closet in the dark room. That's what this area is. So it's in the shadow, but it's even getting less light because it's going further in. So think of it like that, if that helps. And then we're going to pull up this. And you're going to see there's going to be some adjustments in the shapes as you go. That's, that's normal. So you're going to get those adjustments. And so, Willie, are you getting a lot of snow, too? We're getting about 12 inches. Right now, out there, it looks crazy, guys, right? So a student asked me and they said, Tim, do you hold down the air when you paint? And it's like, yes, I do. I hold down the air and I pump the trigger. And that's something that you want to do. But you only pump the trigger when you want to apply the ink, but you always want to have the air going. Okay, so why do you have the air going, you might ask. Well, the reason you have the air going is because now all you got to worry about is the is the amount of paint or ink that we're pulling out. We don't have to worry about the air. That's already coming out. If you had to do both of them at the same time all the time, that would be impossible and impractical. You know, airbrush is a precision game, so you want to be precise. And so you don't want to have to worry about all those other variables at the same time. You have to keep it simple, right? Keep it simple. Uh, that's how we solve major, major, you know, technical issues such as airbrushing. Now, sometimes going into with the medium mixture, you might say, oh, that was a mistake. And that's what I said. Oh, that was a mistake. So I'm going to take my aggressive eraser. Now, what's really important, I'm going to go ahead and uh, just put some air on there, right? And I'm going to let it dry, and while it's drying, I'm going to get myself some water. So if you guys have some water, go ahead and do what you got to do. Oh, that was good. I said to myself before I started, you know, I'm only going to need one water. No, I said, then I said, maybe I should get a second one. So I made a good decision. So I, I got two waters. I might need three. <laughs> Chris says, uh, Rick, he used uh, Tim's inks on some graphic work and it came out awesome. Tim, check it out and uh, and gave it a thumbs up. Oh man, yeah, you do some amazing stuff, man. Uh, Chris does some great graphic work. And thank you for using my inks, sir. Yes, thanks for hockey and thanks for curling. So let's see now. Still got to make it turn because it's just not turning enough, right? That's how I see it. But remember, we wanted to fix that area in the nose because I went in with the medium mixture, which was a job for the light mixture, right? So see that? That's no good, Tim. So we're just going to remember it was dry. Took some. Took a water break. Then I just calm that down. Because Tim, you have to calm down sometimes. Light mixture, which I should have been in the first place. Now, one of the things when you're painting, right? You gotta ask yourself, is the, when you're putting a dark, is it outside the shape or inside the shape? And here on the nose, this is on the inside of the shape. So make that distinction really going to help. Remember perpendicular and not parallel. See that? And then we can, this is a job for the glasses, so let's make that happen. Go. 
though. So you see, it's not so much the shape itself that describes the form. Sometimes it's the adjacent shape that describes the form. So always remember that. So always look how the, the shapes sort of border each other and what are they doing. That's really crucial. Okay, so while I'm here, let's continue with this blown up thing. And I have the light mixture and I'm going to go ahead and describe the form underneath his eye here. Now remember, what's happening is that the light's coming from up here, right, from this way, and what's happening is this area is kind of tucked underneath and is not getting the light, so we have to make sure that we express that. That's where Mr. Wonderful's likeness is. So just stick with that program, you're gonna be okay. Yeah, that's so horrible what happened. Oh boy. Yeah, I was feeling so sad. Now, you're still waiting, I think. Okay, so as far as those inks, if they aren't lost, I'll send out another package. So you let me know. And you let me know what happened with the tracking and everything. But I'm not going to leave you in a lurch, Monty. We'll take care. I'll take care of you. So don't worry about it. I got you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, you know, I know they're going to get to you eventually, I sent them out, you know, with the tracking and everything, but how about this, Monty, why don't we do this, I will make you up a new set of inks, and I'm going to ship it out to you, and we just go 50-50 on the shipping, what, is, what do you say about that, so since it's in South Africa, uh, if we go 50-50 on the shipping, it won't be too bad, Monty, what do you think? This way, when the others arrive, which they will, but it's taking a long time, I'll send these new ones, and hopefully they'll get there quicker. And worst comes to worst, you get an extra set of uh, inks on me, so that's okay. I don't mind. Everything we do on one eye, you guys know what's coming next, you know, whatever we do on one eye, we have to do, and I know you guys know this, guys and girls, make me proud. Okay, great, Monty. I'm going to make the inks, and I'm going to email you, and we'll work on that shipping, so uh, we'll get that second shipment out to you. Uh, you let me know when they arrive, and the other ones, when they arrive, which, you know, hopefully they will, you'll just get double inks. Perfect, Monty. Okay. And... Hey, what's up, old rude crew dude? How you doing? Good to see ya. Glad you made it back. And what we're doing here, remember everything that's going on in the light mixture, I mean everything that's going on in the light side is like a shout. Everything that's going on in the shadow side is like a whisper, right? So, yes, John, you're right. Everything you do on one eye, you gotta do on the other. Very true. And... Well, I just have to stay neutral on bird jokes, that's all, my friend. I 
I do love birdies though. So you see like right here guys, um, there's a lot of information going on in here. Although it's in the shadow side, there's light bouncing around and that re that's called reflected light. But even that reflected light, uh, when it arrives on the form is affected uh, by parts of the form that are either facing the reflected light or turned away from the reflected light. So even then we have to uh, look into that, you know, we have to pay attention. Uh, Always check for any kind of uh, tip dry. Now you get a lot less tip dry with my Airbrush India inks than you would any other paints, that's for sure. Like maybe 90% less, but it does happen nonetheless. darker right think of the uh, the open closet in a dark room there are areas that are even darker and you have to make sure that you address them and now we're going to go with the least aggressive eraser you know and let's see I love this Mono 3.8. It's really great by Tombow. And it erases, but it's very soft, as you can see. It might be too soft for this job, but let's see if, how it works first. Notice I let that dry before I went in there. You don't want to erase wet paper. That's a recipe for disaster. So you see, we are starting to get forms even in the shadow. See right here you have a light, but the light can't exist without an adjacent dark next to it, where that's kind of redundant, without an adjacent uh, dark. So you see you have that light right there, and then you're just going to make sure you do the dark next to it. Otherwise, it just doesn't, st it won't stand by itself. The light needs the dark to exist. So now when we zoom out, you're going to see a transformation, right? And that's what we want. We're starting to see that. But when we look at it from the big picture, we can definitely see that if we we can dust that down because it was a little too strong. So you see we can calm that down. My Siri just went off on my iPad for no apparent reason. <laughs> Has that happened to you guys? Uh, so Monty says he's going to keep it as is and just frame it and reminder of the stuff. Oh, that destroyed artwork. Yeah, oh boy. Now, it's all about making things turn. So right here in his nose, we're gonna go and zoom in a little bit and see like where how we can make that nose turn right so let's start out with the media mixture and we're just going to work on the part of the nose that is not facing the light right that's called the terminator or your darkest darks you know there's a lot of different words for it 
So what we want to do is get that shape. That's all we care about is the shape. So once we have that dark established, and then we want to establish, and we squint our eyes, and I really want you to squint your eyes. You see, when you squint your eyes, you'll start to see uh, the value relationships and whether or not one value is too far away from the adjacent value. And that happens. And when those values are too far apart, that's when things stop looking like a good representation of what or who you're painting. So if you squint your eyes, you can see with the one second rule, if you are, uh, you have the value relationships correct. Okay, so now we went ahead with the medium mixture, and I was switching with the dark, with the uh, light mixture. The two airbrush system is really important, so make sure you stick with that, guys. Okay. So now we're gonna do as the nose turns towards the light. It's gonna slowly go from this dark to this light over here. So what we have to do is paint that transition. Remember, the more round it is, the longer that transition. The less round, the more harsh that transition is. And then you see that the nose is not very round uh, at the bone. So that's why you see a pretty harsh transition between the dark and the transition tone right here. Value relationships right here, you can see it's a little far away, and we're just going to dust that from about four inches away and calm that down. So now if I zoom out, and I can definitely see that I can actually go a little bit darker with this side plane here. So this all goes into making this nose, this form, three-dimensional. It's really important. Same thing here. See, the bone or the cartilage goes down and splits into two at the base of his nose here. So we're going to actually address how this area is getting a little bit more light because it's sticking out a little bit more. And if it's sticking out a little bit more, that means it's going to be facing the light a little bit more, thus getting more white. Remember, more facing, the more it's facing the white, or the more it's facing the light, the more it's going to get white. We all want to paint the nose, right? We want to, you know, how do you paint noses? I get that all the time. And I really want to say, just really observe, right? Just look at each individual nose as a three-dimensional form. And then when you do that, then you're going to paint the nose naturally. So it's not like there's a technique to paint the nose. Uh, it really is just really paying attention. So now you see we went ahead and turned that nose. Let's see how it looks from here. Okay, so now the nose is starting to turn a little bit more. But it's great when you zoom out because then you can see how it works, um, you know, in the context of the whole tech, uh, tapestry of the head. So then you know you can definitely calm this down. So I can calm that down a little bit. So that's not bad, right guys? Not bad at all. So let's see any questions here. Uh, 
let's see. Okay, cool. All right, we're caught up with the questions. Let me get a swig of water. I may have to go get more from the kitchen. Ah. Okay. So, continuing making things darker, but also why we're doing that, like, I close my eyes and look at the painting. Whatever stands out has to go, especially at this stage. We don't want anything standing out. We want everything to come together. At the very end with the white pastel, then things are going to explode, but only then. So right now, we'll get to making things darker, but you see that's a little too ardent. So anything that is too stand stands out too much got has to be pulled back so right here we're going to pull back this area just a little bit it's nice and thoroughly dry so we're not tearing into the surface which is nice now you see here this value right here is a little bit lighter so we're really looking for all the value relationships that's so important everybody Okay, so now where else can we go ahead and put some attention on this, this portrait of Mr. Wonderful here? Uh, I like the way the white, the paper is looking, the paper is making this shirt look white so I don't have to go in there, so that's good. And let's save that for later. If I went in and put that white, I think it would draw everything all off and I don't want to do that. definitely see where it's darker down here so the lights up here so of course it's going to get darker as we go down away from the light so let's address that a little bit pumping the trigger and I definitely want to get that sense that it's darker down here than it is up here darker as it turns away from the light otherwise it's just not going to be one form so we have to make sure we get that larger form uh, down so it's good to if you're painting the, uh, the moon it's good to have you know paint the moon first and then you can do the details of the typography later right so get the the large uh, shadow of the moon first and then you can do all the detail later. That's so important. right here in this lip there. We'll just put that in. Believe it or not, those creases are very important because they describe the shape of the lip. So 
I like the way they actually sort of roll right on the shape of the lip, really describe it. They're not going straight up and down there. Following the actual shape of the lip, so that's why they're so important. Now we do have the nose right here. The side plane is a little bit stronger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow up the nose here. And of course, on pure ref. Now we zoom out, you see we should have a better indication of the shape of the nose there. And you can see it's much thinner in the center and then comes all the way down. So it's a lot. You couldn't do that in the early going. You have to create the form slowly. So, you know, that's why you don't want to look at the likeness because that area, which is so important with the likeness, if you rushed it, it just would look totally out of place and wouldn't really help you painting all the rest of the form. So, so it's so important to develop your painting when you're doing a portrait. So we're going to come back here and we're going to look at these shapes here which are very important. And we're definitely not we're definitely not getting involved in too many details, but we're looking at the the forms, both the larger ones and the smaller ones and you know, trying to make them three-dimensional. That's going to go a very long way. And also I'm going to look at, you know, how large the bottom lip is. And I think I might have made that a little small. So as you see, as I make it a bit larger, uh, it is actually working out. So that's a very important adjustment I just made. And also this little triangle shape right there. Of course, I have to calm that down, but right now I'm just establishing that shape. Same here. Just this little, just a slight lighter shape right there. It's all part of it, guys. It's all part of it. can't paint the eyelashes if the eye is not sitting in the socket which is sitting on uh, you know on the skull so you know you have to get the skull then the eye socket then the muscle then the eyes then the eyelid then the eyelashes you see how that works so it's very important to have a succession of larger forms to smaller forms but your goal is to make them three-dimensional that's your goal that's your job. Your job is to take this two-dimensional surface, which is a piece of paper, and make it three-dimensional.
that's your only job. So make sure that we do that. Always ask yourselves, you know, where can you put more detail? Where are you uh, neglecting, right? You know, what areas are we neglecting? So looking at this, I can definitely see I'm neglecting the uh, this area over here. Now there isn't much detail, but there is a, a value over here. Since the light is coming from the front and up to the left, even though this is facing the left, it's still turning down. So this is hitting a direct over here, but this is still facing the light somewhat, but it's turned away to a certain degree. So since it's turned away to a certain degree, we have to adjust that value. It's not directly facing the light like this is, so that's why this has to be darker, otherwise it will be flat. And you don't want your work to look flat, you know? So Brad says it's probably more difficult to give dimension to a subject with a straight-on reference photo. Yeah, you, the thing is, good question, but if you have a photo that doesn't have dimension, such as a flat, straight-on photo, there's only so much you can do with that. You can't make it up, so you can only paint the reference that you have. So that's why a really good photo to start with, with good lights and darks that describe the form, is going to make for a better painting. So make we have to make no mistake about it. A better paint, a better photo, is going to make for a better painting, always. That's why it's always if when you can to have a model and you be the photographer. That's. That's the perfect situation for the artist. So you see, coming in and hitting... Now, with the one second rule, you're going to see there are certain areas pumping that trigger that are darker, and we're going to hit that. So you see, now we're going ahead and you're seeing that it's not only turning this way, but it's also turning this way. It's turning this way. That's what you have to do. There's no choice. You have to make it turn. Uh, now, if you have a bad photograph, you're not going to have that ability because you can't make things up. Uh, but uh, with a good photo like this, why I picked this photo is that it, the light is really describing the form very well. So, right here see coming down here it's much darker we're going to pump that trigger and just bring that up like so and you see guys i and girls i really want you to see the uh grain of the skin There's no detail here. We're not talking about detail at all. We're just talking about forms and making each form a three-dimensional form by understanding what's happening and where that central light source is and then making it happen on your artwork, right? So let's go ahead underneath his mouth here. Let's see if we can focus that for you. Hey, that's better. Okay, so we're going, I'm going to go with the light mixture. You always want to start out with the light mixture. You can always go darker. There we go. Right here area that's hitting the light just a little bit more than what's around same thing here this is just 
facing the light a little bit more because it's like almost directly facing the light. But remember, the light needs the darkness to show up. So that's so important. <laughs> oh, uh, sinuses. Oh man, hey Mike, how you doing? Sorry to hear you have sinus issues, sir. So remember when I said that, you know, this little light, if you don't have a dark next to it, it's not going to show up. So you see how we put a dark next to it. Make sure you're doing the one second rule. You don't want to put an arbitrary dark there. So you see these little darks here, which are crucial to show off those lights. One second rule will keep you in the game. And then we'll go back with the eraser and knock out some of those lights. zoom out and see what we have so yes so you see how it, little by little we're putting in some nice detail my lights just flickered maybe that's a time that's a good sign for me to charge my laptop and other peripherals because they said that we could get a power outage uh, with this blizzard so Give me one moment, guys. I'm just going to go ahead and charge my peripherals. Peripherals. Let's see. Okay, iPad. iPad and then my laptop. I just charged it. So, any... Oh, thank you, Patty. I appreciate that. Oh, Rick, have a great night, my friend. Always great seeing you. I'm so glad you made it back. I hope you can make it next week, sir. So good to see you there, my guess. So glad you made it. I hope you feel better. So a lot of these areas that are, are light really need to have some, some value because they're not facing the light. So if they're not facing the light, guys and girls, they are definitely going to uh, have value, a darker value. So when we do that, uh, you'll see that when we darken areas, then when we do lighten the adjacent areas, it really does stand out. And then he really starts to have three dimensions. So right here, we have some light here. So I'm going to start with the least aggressive eraser. And I'm just going to follow the, the grain of the skin. People ask me, what do I think of skin, uh, you know, skin stencils, skin texture stencils. And 
you know for me I would never want to do it because I want to learn you're never going to get to that point where you're going to start to see the grain of the skin and that is like one of the secrets of portrait painting when you start seeing that and I want you all to experience that so you know rather than have those skin stencils I would much rather you uh, really look at the undulations of everything as the forms turn towards and away from the light yeah so you see how it how he comes together it's not until we start darkening things and you know getting those subtle modulations not just the the sharp you know light and darks but also these little areas right here that these values are close to one another but without addressing them the form's not going to turn he's going to look like a cartoon and we don't want that right oh thank you wendy i appreciate that and my guest thank you so much uh for that I really appreciate your your encouragement today. So you see how we're just going to continue on turning the forms all over the place. There are forms everywhere that need to be turned. That there are forms that are not just straight. Remember, the cylinder of the teeth is going like this, right? So it's not going to be one, one value. It's turning in all directions towards the light, away from the light. So that's why it's so important to get all those, all those variations in there. Now, looking at all these different turns here, uh, we can actually darken the lips a little bit. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And so looking at the value of the lips, I can see with the light mixture. And you know, it's always important to have actually ink inside your airbrush. So <laughs> I find that's very crucial. Something about having ink in the airbrush, making it work, is just fantastic. And, oh, so I have a couple of questions. Tim, my guest says, Tim, it looks like you may get hammered tonight with snow. Oh, yes, definitely, my friend. Almost a foot of snow, Mike. I'm staying inside. I have coffee, and I have uh, a pork roast I'm going to make tomorrow, so I'll be okay. And Joe says, Tim, how do you handle a subject with heavy facial hair or let's say five o'clock shadow? Very good question. So Joe comes up with these really good questions. And uh, so you don't want to get involved in the facial hair before you get involved with the lights and darks of the cheek and the chin and everything like that. So you do those the facial hair later. First, you want to do the moon and then the crater, if that makes sense. So think about that. If you want to paint the craters on the moon, you're going to paint the uh, moon, uh, whether it's a half moon or a quarter moon or something like that, and then you paint those craters because it has to fit in the context of whether the craters are on the shadow side or the light side. If you start putting in all the craters before then, then it's going to look really weird, you know? Oh, yes, where Chris is, he's going to get 24 inches. So, Chris, you take care of yourself and don't shovel, my friend. If you do shovel, please make sure you uh, just take it easy. Now, I know that Mr. Willie is going to get a lot of snow, so uh, make sure you don't do too much shoveling. If you do, please pace yourself, Willie, okay? I remember we we're going to darken those lips. 
We're going to use a light mixture. <laughs> Willie says he's going to put that in the book. <laughs> mostly females where you can keep the facial hair to a minimum. True, true. It's the same thing, uh, Joe, if you're painting, let's say, you know, little creases in the lips. So first, before you do those little creases in the lips, you want to do the lights and darks of the lips first and then put them in. Same thing with the facial hair, you know, you want to do the, um, you want to do the larger forms first, and then you paint those smaller forms on top of it. It's called like uh, stacked forms. Hey, I, I like I like Canadian women. They're kind of cute up there, you know. But then again, you know. I just like women, so, you know, I have a problem. <laughs> you know, I, I really can entertain myself, as you can see. Monty says, I haven't seen some walking around there. Oh my goodness, is that a good thing or a bad thing, Monty? says hammered not flattened out <laughs> oh wow that's something so now we're gonna zoom out my friends and let's take a look and see what we got what we have so there we go and it is darker on this side, so we're just going to darken this here. Put some texture in those lips and sort of just blend those lips, that, the mouth. There we go. One second rule, guys. Always one second rule. Okay, went a little bit overboard right here. <laughs> oh, so this is, uh, so Chris is off tomorrow. That's good. So that's why Chris is in such a good mood. Thank God you're off tomorrow, Chris. That's a good feeling, especially with this crazy snowstorm. So as you see here, I went a little crazy with the dark. I extended the dark out too far. So definitely had to adjust that and then there's a slight light coming right here there we go I like that better and then I could calm down this border a little bit but as you can see I'm working on large shapes Right here this edge here so you see right here it's a little strong I have to calm that down a little bit so I can either lighten this surrounding areas or I'm gonna lighten the dark or darken the surrounding areas so I'll choose to lighten the dark and I think that goes a long way just bringing it back into 
relationship with where it is, you know, it all relates to it. Uh, so Patty, oh, so who's, so who's leaving? Let me see. Oh, Patty, have a great night. Thank you so much for coming by, and I hope Friday comes real quick for you as well. And don't work so hard, okay? So right here, I definitely was a little strong with my values. They were too far away, and sort of bringing them close really makes a lot of sense. nice light right here so let's just erase the, some of that light out uh, remember this area is facing the light most directly so there's an area that is getting a lot of light so let's make that happen So who out there who out there likes uh, Costco potato salad that stuff's amazing have you guys tried that that is just like really delicious I've uh, had some of the Costco red skin potato salad so I don't have a Costco card anymore but that was one of my favorites and you see I'm looking with the eraser, I'm looking for that grain of the skin. And you see, I'm actually, I'm not just going in a direction of this, the muscles or, you know, but I'm also just looking at the shapes. And also, when you're looking at the shapes, you can really feel them being tugged in this direction or that direction. I really recommend this eraser guys and we do I do carry it on my website so definitely check it out if you have any questions uh, you can always email me Timothy at uh, gmail.com actually no paint paint the glyphs at gmail.com that's the address I'll put that in there again Yes, I do. Uh, the California Air... Oh, Camilo! Como esta? How you doing, sir? Uh, I use the uh, six-gallon California Air Tools, as Mike had uh, uh, said. Uh, so thanks, Mike. Yeah, I really love it a lot. So, Brad, have a great night, my friend. You take care of yourself, and, uh, and always a pleasure, sir. Always a pleasure. So, uh, we are just going to continue here. Like I always say, you know, we want to make sure that everything is in balance. So, if I squint my eyes, I definitely can see this light right here is a little out of balance. But, now that I look at it, it sort of has the same value here. And now I can calm that down. I'm going to be about five inches from the subject, from the paper. And I'm just going to calm down that value and bring this down. There we go. Willie says, never had it. Never had the... Um, the California Air Tools, Willie? Oh, the 6010 is a great one. That's a big one. I love that one. Uh, I had I had the 6010, and, uh, you know, it gave me great service, but that one died. But I had it for like six years. And remember, I airbrush about six hours a day. So I kill my compressors. We're going to come in with the medium mixture.
I think I hear my garbage can floating away. <laughs> I hear some someone's garbage can outside is kind of moving moving away, so hopefully it's not mine. <laughs> we have some high wind going today. Yeah, that's true. That's a great one. Yeah, the California Air Tools is a very good company. So here I am with the medium mixture, and I'm just going to give a little oomph to the, the upper lip there. Now on this side, the right side, I am going to see where I could calm down the value. Remember, they have to, they have to uh, work together, right? You know, it has to fit. So we have to make sure the values fit into the larger context. Just like a tree has to fit in the context of the forest. So now you can see how all of a sudden more detail is revealing itself as we put things into proper context then we can go a little bit darker. So I'm gonna take my mono zero eraser. Dun, da, da, da. Uh, Chris says, Mike, did Tim just say uh, she died? He was, and he was getting, no, that, no, I did not say that. <laughs> my compressor died. Yes, now my compressor. Uh, yeah, so that, I kill my compressors. There we go. And so, like I said, we're moving, I move around so much that at times I forget where I am, but that's okay. It's all in the context of the larger forms. Okay, so we were doing detail in the eyes, right? There we go. Let's put some, some life into Mr. Wonderful here, into his portrait, I should say. So you see how just a little bit here and there really does wonders. We don't care if it looks like him. We just care that we are describing the forms correctly. And then it'll look like him. Let's get a little more aggressive, shall we? go. A little more aggressive. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Every battle is won or lost before it's ever fought. Remember that everybody. You know, if you're going in with a game plan, you stick with that game plan and you know that 99 out of 100 times you're going to win with that game plan, then stick with it because it's your best chance to win. If sticking with a technique is your best chance of getting a successful painting, then definitely stick with the technique, even if it looks like it's not coming out perfect. Okay? I think that's a good route to go. Oh, that was Sun Tzu, The Art of War, Joe. Every battle was won or lost before it ever fought. Uh, that it was made famous in the 80s with the movie Wall Street with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen and so yeah so basically preparation is everything preparation and game plan or strategy so you want to stick with that when you're painting and remember I do give workshops which my workshops are ridiculously inexpensive for what you get. So it is 18 hours for $299. And I send you a set of India inks. And I go on your schedule. Now in 2021, I'm still going to do the one-on-one -on -one with current students. But I won't do one-on-one -on -one students for new students. So right now you have the chance to for $2.99 to get in to my uh, 
one on one for two ninety nine. I have very high end, uh, high end, uh, sort of Skype type software with Google, so it's really, really great, and I'm able to really help students and just watch them develop. And it's one of the reasons why I charge only two ninety nine. Most people charge nine hundred for what I do, or even more. But the thing is, I want you to buy airbrushes, better airbrush. I want you to buy better materials, and you can't do that if you're paying nine hundred dollars. So that's why I lower the cost uh, for the individual one on ones right now. So if you're interested, email me. And uh, if you're interested in one of my one on one classes, which are the one on ones are only available till the end of the year. So, I mean, once you're in, that you're going to have one on one until we're done. But I won't be doing that for new students, you know? I'm going to be doing group classes. So, uh, so my guest says, Tim, I wonder if you could use a fine, stiff brush to do five o'clock shadows. Soak the bristle tips with ink. You can, but when you're looking at paintings, uh, even always look to the old masters. Don't look at new airbrush guys. Please, please do not. It's like, do not sip from the stream when you can sip from the river. So the best way to do something like that is to look at paintings by Hans Holbein the Younger. He's amazing. And let me see if I can show you one painting by Hans Holbein the Younger. If I could put that. Hans Holbein portrait. He did this one where it was a little bit of stubble. And I want you to see it. And let's see if I go ahead and Okay, yes, there is no sound when that happens, but I did want to show you that. That was very important. So as you can see, we look at the old masters, and and that's, oh, so Willie needs to get a webcam. Okay, no problem. And uh, so it's very important, even though you didn't have sound, I'm going to explain it. So I'm going to bring this picture over here. Let's see. 
Nope, I won't be able to show you. But you want to look at the old masters for for the um, what's going on with the five o'clock shadow. Please don't look at airbrush guys. Don't uh, you know? Don't even look at my work. You know, I'm just somebody trying to get there. So look at guys like Rembrandt. Look at guys like uh, like Vermeer. Look at guys like uh, uh, Holbein, Jean Augusta Dominique Angra. They're going to give you the uh, answers right there. You know. Hey, Monty, you have a great night, my friend, and I'm going to email you, and we're going to figure out how to get a new set of inks to you, and so if the other ones arrive, and also we'll look at your old order and see what we can do. We'll turn it around. We'll turn a negative thing around, okay, sir? So that would be really good. So you take care, Monty. I'm going to email you, uh, if not tonight, then tomorrow. What a great group we have today, guys. Really amazing. Just a wonderful group. So we are at 1126, so we had a good night today so far, I think, which was really great. So I'm not sure when I go to that other screen why I'm not getting sound. So I'm just going to... No, they don't, Mike. That's true. Uh, I definitely couldn't. Uh, I couldn't afford to. That means I would be paying you if I gave you an Infinity Airbrush. I would be basically paying you to take the class, which, which I would be wonderful if I can do that, right? I would love to get, you know, have the ability to. Uh, but that's, you know, I have some ideas coming in 2021, you know, God willing, uh, I can do some things which will get the classes to more people. So I'm always thinking about everyone, you know, not just, you know, everyone, everyone I want the ability to get much better with the airbrush. It's so important to me. I want everyone to enjoy the airbrush like I am. Let's see, I'm just going to work on this eye a little bit before we go. I know everyone likes it when I blow up things. <laughs> I know you are, Mike. I know. I appreciate you, sir. Definitely appreciate you, Mike. And you're an important part of our live streams. I'm glad you're here. So it's 11.28. You guys know when I can, I always give the full two hours. Oh, and next week. Next week, even though. So what's today? The 16th? So next week's the 23rd, being the day before Christmas Eve. You know what that means? I'm still going to be here. So I'm still going to do a live stream, whether it's Christmas Eve or whether it's the day, I mean, the day before Christmas Eve or the day before New Year's Eve or if it's New Year's Day or whatever, I'm still going to do the live stream because it's important because I'm able to talk to great people like yourselves and hang out and I want you know, I really want to it to be about you, you all, you know? I really want it to be about that. Oh, Hillbilly says uh, he's happy to take paying two ninety nine, but can't take the classes right away. Hillbilly, since you said that, in 2021, you're still eligible for that one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you do that later. So if anyone wants to lock in the chance to do the one-on-one -on -one for two ninety nine. 
just email me and say that you know you can't take it now but you'd like to lock that in okay so once again paintingglyphs at gmail.com good night John thank you so much oh the, you know the pastel people they forgot about me my friend you know uh, but that's okay. I left them behind. <laughs> you know, now I'm with you airbrush folk, you know, so that's good. I'm, I'm happy hanging with you guys and girls, the best people ever. It is 1130, and you know what that means? Nothing. Uh, basically, uh, this is the end of our live stream, guys. Take care of yourselves. Thank you, Willie. Thank you, Hillbilly, and... And Chris and Mike and Raul and and Wendy, please feel better. John, uh, Chris, if I didn't mention you, Joe, old crew dude, art dude, and we have um, my guests, uh, Mike. Uh, we also have Mike, the other Mike, Camilo, Patty, uh, Monty, John, the two Johns. And let's see who else I have. I don't want to forget anyone who has made comments here. If I do, Brad. And let's see. A lot of comments here. Thank you so much for hanging out with Tim today. I really appreciate it. You make my Wednesday. I don't know what my week would be without you. So that's why even though next week is the day before New Year, day before Christmas Eve, I'm going to be here. So Patrick, thank you. Mr. Kennedy, thank you. Tone, Air Todd. And let's see, I think I got everyone, Rick. And so thank you guys, really appreciate you. You guys are fantastic. And I hope to see you next week. Have a great weekend. I'm gonna be uh, looking at the snow for the next hour. <laughs> Take care.